Welcome to Sonar Phone. I'm glad you took the time to watch this little video and maybe you've already had a chance to download the app itself to play with the demo feature. And I encourage every one of you to download the demo and play with it so you can see all the cool features. What I'm gonna talk about now is how to set the system up and some troubleshooting tips. Um, the teapot is by far and away the most popular item. This little bugger weighs, you know, only four ounces. Uh, you can use it almost anywhere. You can cast it, troll it. You can drag it behind a boat. There's no limit to the applications of what people will be using the, the teapod for. It's truly amazing in many respects. And I want you to be aware, a lot of people ask the question, what are these three little things on the bottom of the teapot? That's the on-off switch. It's water activated. When you put it in the water, the teapod turns on. Um, when you take it off, after about a, about a minute or so, it'll shut itself off. What I often do here for testing purposes is I'll take a wet paper towel and put it over the connections, and that'll actually turn the teapot on. And if, I don't know, you won't be able to see it, I'm sure, because of the lighting, but it actually glows, and, uh, and then it actually starts blinking when it's actually transmitting. Uh, the teapot is a very tough, very rugged system, runs for about four and a half hours on a single charge. And that brings me to the charging plug system. Now, the, the, the teapot cannot be overcharged. Uh, what you get is the USB connector and a charging cube. Runs from uh, 110 to 220 volts, so it can be used anywhere in the world. The long cord with the yellow thing on it that says that this is for the power for charging is the one you use for charging only for charging. The short one with the protective cover on it is used for factory reset. If for some reason you forget what your uh, passwords were, you can actually reset your little teapot by using the short plug and reset it back to factory default settings. And those default settings are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see, all passwords have to be eight numbers or digits uh, to meet the password requirements for Apple and Android. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the default code from the factory. So always remember that one through eight and log it in. Now, one of the things you also need to remember, and it's very important, I gotta stress this, is that I do not want anyone connecting the power and the charging terminals to your teapot when they're still wet, or simply because it causes electrolysis to occur and rust will start to develop on your connection. So you wanna make sure you dry off your connections, make sure they're good and dry before you connect it for charging. You cannot overcharge the system. Once you plug it in to your wall socket, the teapot will start glowing red. That will signify that it's actually charging, turn back green when it's done. <laughs> it's really amazing, but you cannot overcharge it. You do not want to drain it all the way down if you can help it. The more often you charge it, the longer the, L the uh, lithium ion batteries will last. Very similar to your cell phones. You want to keep charging and charging and charging. Um, this system is designed to last for about 500 recycles. So it's gonna last a long time and it's a very powerful tool indeed. Um, with your system, you get your charging cube, your reset and power cord. So I want you to be aware of this system. Now, what I have done here is again, taken a wet paper cloth and inserted into the connections to turn the system on. Now it takes about 30 to 40 seconds for the system to technically start transmitting. So be aware, it's not an instantaneous thing. It takes a little while and you'll see it started to glow. Then after a while, it'll start to flicker, but it's not instantaneous. So be aware of that. The most important thing to understand is that it's not at this stage of the game where you go directly into your sonar phone app. You must first go into your settings control on your, on your phone or your tablet to establish how you want the system to understand your Wi-Fi. It's kind of like going to the nearest McDonald's and identifying the McDonald's Wi-Fi receiver, okay, or transmitter. So you'll do the same thing here, is that you have to go into your settings first. So let's walk you through that procedure. The first thing you need to be aware of is that the, the settings control of your sonar phone is very, very important because it's the first step that you'll always make when you're hooking up your sonar phone to your system. Now, when the system comes in, um, it, you'll notice that you, you've got to go through your basic settings as well. And one of the things we should check into first, let's check the display. Uh, we want to make sure that you're, you're in, in sleep mode. Never. We never want it to go to sleep. Brightness. You always want to set it as bright as it can possibly be so you get maximum visibility on the display. 
So once we've established some of the basic things to make your system function all the time, um, let's go into the Wi-Fi network. So that's up here. Let's go to the Wi-Fi networks. Now, when your transmitter is transmitting, you will see the display pop up on the screen and it will be secured with WPA. Now that is the password of the actual Wi-Fi channel. And so all you simply have to do, it's the teapot, we've established it. Now to tap in, type in the WPA number, you simply use the universal uh, default code, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the factory default. Whenever the system gets out of sync and you need to reset it, you just go back to factory default. And then once you say you're done with that, now what it's going to do is you're going to ask it to connect and you watch it. It's connecting, it's authentic, authenticating, authenticating, that's a big word. And once it's authenticated, now it says it's connected. Now you can leave the settings and go to your sonar phone. Now, once you're in your sonar phone, your initial screen will come up. And then of course your, you know, uh, warning screens will come up. No problem there. You just agree and tap on. Now you get your basic sonar phone app startup page. And here it's very critical that you go to your master now. The system will not function unless you go to master. Now that you touch the master, again it will ask another password. Now you can go up to setup and, and make your own custom password, but again the factory default password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once that's done, you submit that and it says set up successful, you hit OK, and now you're ready to be able to start the function by hitting connect now. The system will then start transmitting and send it directly to your teapot. It will we'll say it says run. And you will notice here on your display that there's an M. That means that you are the master. If a master is not established with your sonar phone system, the system will not engage. In other words, it needs a master first. You cannot come in as a slave. A slave is a person who will watch the signal, not control it. You'll be able to be the master and you'll watch it from there. Now, what I've done here is I've actually taken a teapot and I put a wet paper towel um, in the three contact points. Now these three contact points, um, these three contact points when they touch the water, turn your system on and they shut it off about a minute afterwards. For, you know, for working here in the office, I just put a wet paper towel in there and that completes the connection and turns your teapot on. In fact, if you had it, it was darker, you actually see it glowing. Uh, you could probably see the glowing and it flashes like that when it's actually transmitting. So you can see her transmitting, you know it's working correctly. Now that you know the teapot is transmitting, at this point you can do what's called an air demo. In the world of sonar, sound travels three times slower in air than water. So if I hold the teapot above the tabletop here about a foot or so, I should be able to see a signal display of three foot on the smart device. You need to be sure you're holding your teapot level. And there it is. An air demo showing the teapot is transmitting by showing a depth of just over three feet. This is a simple way of testing your teapot at home before you go to the lake. Be aware that there is a priority going on here with your sonar phone. It will always require someone to be the master. So when you do lock into your signal and you're ready to connect, you want to make sure you connect as the master, otherwise it'll bump you back out. So connect as master, and your password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Connect, run, and you're good to go. In many cases, you'll be able to go in and out of the, if your teapot is functioning, in and out of other apps without, have, without touching anything other than one key function. So if you're going to a Navionics map chip, to be a NAPS application to see where you are on the lake, then you can easily swipe right back to the sonar phone then right back to the Navionics map, then right back to the sonar phone again. It is really convenient once you get into it. But the setup, remember, requires you to first go into settings, identify the Wi-Fi, set your WPA code, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then once you go into the system, you first must go into master and you're good to go. Now, if you're coming in as a slave, see, either, um, you're either the master or the slave, you won't have to worry about that because once you get into the WPA code, you hit connect, it already knows there's a master involved. It'll ask you to run and you will now be considered the slave. Now, you have most control of the, of the sonar you know, configuration, sweep speed and certain things like that. 
but range and other functions are controlled only by the master. So you have limited control functions as a slave, but there can be an unlimited number of slaves watching one master signal. This is a sonar phone. It's an amazing touchscreen technology. Enjoy.